Hello watchers, welcome back to the channel to this video face-off, this, this head-to-head duel between two, uh, I, I'd like to call them mid-level luxury Swiss automatic chronographs. Uh, this has been a, a face-off that I've been wanting to do for some time, but because of all the stuff that is, that's been coming in, I haven't had uh, the time to sit down to do this yet. Uh, that's a great problem to have. So, But finally, uh, here it is. Uh, the, on, the, on the left side, I have the Omega Seamaster Professional Automatic Chronograph uh, in black. This is, of course, the pre-ceramic version. Um, uh, and, and I've done video reviews of both these watches uh, before, and I've put links there. Uh, to the relevant reviews, uh, which you can check out if you haven't already. Uh, on the uh, right side, I have the uh, Mont Blanc Sport uh, Automatic Chronograph Model 3273. Uh, so just to quick note in terms of the overall uh, similarities, they are both uh, ETA Valjoux 7750 movements of course you, you probably recognize them straight away they, they beat at 28 800 uh, vibrations per hour both are 41.5 millimeter diameter cases with uh, as you can see steel insert unidirectional rotating dive style bezels and they have both uh, uh, sapphire crystal on the front of course at, at this price point uh, they have bracelets with solid end links uh, and they both also have push pin adjustments. Neither of these at this age, uh, keep in mind that they're a few years old now, uh, they, they don't have uh, screws in the bracelet, they have push pins, uh, which is a negative uh, compared to this day and age. Now, the MSRP, um, you know, they are mid tier, very similar price point. The MSRP, uh, as far as I've been able to research, uh, was 4100 USD for the, the Amiga. Uh, and it is 4,500 USD for the Mont Blanc, but in reality, uh, in terms of brand discount uh, at the retail side, you will pay slightly more for the Amiga. You know, a bit less uh, in terms of MS, in terms of retail price, you'd pay for the uh, Mont Blanc Sport, it, it, and it, that's in the order of several hundred dollars. Um, okay, so on with the comparison. Uh, you know, the the uh, uh, ten. Categories out of 10 points to add to 100. I'll, I'll point you to the first uh, jewel I did between uh, Amiga versus Oris uh, divers um, for details. So the movement, the caliber, have to give it to the Amiga. I think uh, they're both uh, based on the 7750 or the Valju movement, the famous uh, widely used uh, chronograph movement. But uh, uh, you know, just as an introduction, that that, that movement does come in standard high grade and chronometer grade and I, I would think that Omega has put out for the chronometer grade because this is a chronometer uh, watch uh, that, that hands uh, blocking it at the moment uh, but it does have the chronometer name on the uh, on the dial there so you know uh, minus four plus six seconds per day strict uh, criteria to get that chronometer rating uh, this watch, uh, you know, actually it doesn't do very badly at all. I think it, in my experience of using this one, it does stick pretty close to about plus five, plus four seconds a day, but it is not rated a chronometer. So uh, I suspect that it will be a slightly lower grade movement that they've put in there. You know, no, no doubt about that. I think somehow they've adjusted that to uh, be able to get 48 hours out of the power reserve whereas this one has a more standard uh, 44 hour but you know with with the grade of the movement it has to go to the Amiga 9 versus 8 is the points I've given for the caliber design okay a little bit subjective uh, but I've given a 9 to the Amiga I've given an 8 to the, the Mont Blanc uh, the Mont Blanc I think it's solid uh, classy in design you know they they, they have a philosophy of a uh, um, old world style with a modern flair and I think they've really achieved that quite well with this particular watch I mean look at that dial you know that that nice uh, lacquered black look uh, homaging the pens uh, you know that that construction on the side with the guards in between the chronograph hands and the crown the, the way they've shaped everything you know just just has a has a nice feel to it I do enjoy the look for this but 
Uh, Omega, you know, this is a pretty legendary design, isn't it? I mean, the, there's the Seamaster, that that very intricate bracelet that I've, you know, I keep gushing about. I won't talk about it too much. You know, that scalloped bezel, that very clear uh, dive style markings on that on that bezel. You know, the hands, the, those skeletonized sword hands, that dial, that, that classic wave dial. You know, I'll try to get some of that coming through here. Look at that, that classic wave pattern, that original, um, when this design first came out in the late 90s. Uh, you know, the, 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 uh, that helium escape talking point. I, I, I've got to give the style, uh, the design to the Amiga. You know, I think there's a lot more um that has gone into that uh Mont Blanc's done a good job but i think you, you have to give it to the amiga quality now here i couldn't really separate it impossible for me to separate i think i think Mont Blanc has done a great job in terms of their their craft how much attention to detail you know they've really paid to the watch you know that that backs actually not no slouch i mean amiga no doubt is is great in in quality the craft but Mont Blanc is not short in the attention to detail they've paid here. So I've, I've actually given them both an eight. I think they're both inseparable and, and great in quality. Now style, I think that that's closely related to design, but I think in terms of style, um, you know, for the Amiga, I've again given the edge to the Amiga nine versus eight for the Mont Blanc, uh, you know, that, that scalloped edge bezel, uh, it's just so classic, uh, the, the the case design. I mean those knurled edges with the the swapping between the the polished and the brushed surfaces. You know so well known, uh, so much love uh, and and following for this Amiga design. Uh, I really have had to give it uh, to the to the Amiga in this case. I mean you know I I really like the style, the all world feel of this watch. But I think it's probably not that controversial that I, I think Amiga edges out in style as well. Performance. Okay. I've given both an 8. Uh, in reality, the Amiga has a, a higher water rating of 300 meters. The, the Mont Blanc has a 200 meter uh, water resistance rating. But they both have screwing crowns and, and case backs. Uh, and I, I'm confident in the water rating of the Mont Blanc despite it. Maybe not strictly being uh, marketed as a dive watch. Uh, I think, you know, it, it really seems to be uh, good on performance. The, the, the timekeeping, the, uh, the chronograph, they function, you know, I think just as well, you know, except for that being a chronometer. Uh, and then, of course, just to remind as well, this one actually does have four hours more on the power reserve. So equal in the performance aid on both is my opinion. Versatility. Okay. I've given a slight edge to Mont Blanc. You know, I think it's it's hard to to sneak uh, a sport style automatic chronograph into you know the more formal settings. Uh, you know, but they're both classy designs, and I've worn you know both to work. I've worn the Omega to work, where I wear a shirt and tie. You know, so smart casual, and I don't think that's a problem at all. In fact, I'd probably wear that with a suit without a problem. Uh, but I think the the Mont Blanc just sneaks in a bit, you know, because it is lighter, it is about 30 grams lighter, and it is also the thinnest 7750 movement watch. It's 14.5 millimeters compared to, to 17 uh, millimeters stick for the Amiga. Um, and, and in the watch, two and a half millimeters in sub, is substantial. You know, we're talking, talking about uh, the Amiga being about 15% thicker. So, you know, I think in in that category, I've I've given a slight edge to the Mont Blanc eight versus seven for versatility. Durability, okay. Again, I couldn't separate this. Both great quality steel. You know, they're both the Surgical three one six L steel. They both have sapphire crystal. Neither of them have ceramic, so they're equal on the bezel. Uh, you know, they they both feel just as solid as the other. Amiga is heavier, but. I can't honestly separate it in durability. I've given eight to both. You could argue maybe seven because you can scratch these and potentially damage it. But, you know, I've given eight to both. Okay, value. I think all things considered, you know, where the Amiga edges out in the movement, the design, 
you know, the style really, and the fact that uh, despite the MSRP being higher for Mont Blanc, you know, maybe you can equal it out when you come down to the discounted price. I, I think you're getting more for the Amiga for the history, the brand, you know, which we'll come to later. I think uh, you really have to give the, the value edge to the Amiga. So I've given eight versus seven on this category. Brand. Now, I think these last two, there's no, not going to be a big question. Uh, I've, I've spoken enough about Omega. You know, it is in the top five in the psyche of almost anybody you talk to who are not particularly uh, watch enthusiasts. It is right there in terms of uh, the most, some of the most famous uh, watch brands in the world. Uh, it, it, they've done so much in their history. They've been there, you know, Moon, uh, Olympics, what have you. I don't have, need to say any more. Uh, I think it's not controversial to definitely give the victory to Amiga here in terms of brand, uh, name, prestige. Um, you might not give it a 10, but I think you definitely have to give it uh, a, a stronger watch brand than Mont Blanc, which, you know, Mont Blanc has um, history in terms of its pens. But I don't think you can uh, you can give it uh, any you know any closer to Amiga than eight versus ten. X Factor. Okay, again, I've given it to the Amiga. You know, uh, clearly it's edged out on most of these things as a watch. No doubt, uh, I think the recognition, the design, you know, the name behind the Seamaster. Uh, value overall, I have to give the X Factor to Amiga. I think I think Mont Blanc has uh, has done a really good job, but you know here we have it, and clearly the victory goes to Amiga. How big a victory? Eighty five versus seventy eight. So there we have it. Two Swiss dive style automatic chronographs, very similar price point, both with great design, quality, you know, commitment from their brands. Um, Amiga has the X Factor, the history, the prestige, and in the end, clearly, I think has put out a better overall watch without much doubt at all. Uh, but props to Mont Blanc for making a serious start in the watch industry with, you know, really what is a pretty full blooded commitment. All right, guys, let me know what you think about this comparison, you know, what your thoughts are, what scores you might have given differently. Um, give us a like as always, and, uh, Subscribe, of course, if you haven't already to keep up with the videos coming out. And as uh, usual, I will see you guys next time.